Hi guys, DC teammates here. Um, somebody said, yeah, we've seen you build the thing. Uh, let's see it make a ring. Okay, um, kind of start to finish. Kind of little bits of the trade. Um, ring gauges. Um, remember when you're making twist rings that um, you probably want to fit the ring to the central part of the ring to, to fit the person's finger. So if they want a 10.25 mid ring, that's where you're going to fit the ring. Obviously, you need a mandrel with settings on it. I don't know if you can see it real well. A couple of cameras go in here, but uh, all the numbers, all the quarters from uh, tiny toe to ogre. Right. You got a mandrel without any markings on it so you can beat on it and not worry about uh, messing with the numbers on it. Alright. Reasonably good hammer that you need. Different hardnesses of. Um, I'm going to guess that this one is like a. I don't know what that one is. This one is like this material, like a PTFE or something like that, but uh, useful hammer. Anyway, this is the kind of junk that you're going to end up with from, like, unless you pay a lot of money, obviously. Uh, do a little investigation, see what they are. Stainless steel is going to be much harder to bend than um, than silver plated stuff. Um, you got to be careful when you when you're cleaning stuff up after you've cut it to grind the ends off to make it smooth. Always cut the cut the piece you're going to do. If you're going to make it a ring, you've got to learn how to measure for the actual size of the circumference of the uh, ring gauge. And you can write that in a book when you've worked it out. It's online as well. But stainless steel much harder. Uh, if you're going to do a twist ring, not so much a problem with the length. You can trim a little bit off afterwards. But cut when you cut where you cut it, you want to finish that before you start bending. Um, get it as clean as possible because once it's in a curl, you 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 have trouble uh, actually getting it. Uh, cleaned up if it's got a sharp edge on it so what I did is uh, I picked out of all this junk this fork it's silver plate it's it's relatively malleable but I'm going to clean, show you this little guy from Harbour Freight grinder on one side and a polisher wheel this polisher wheel is magnificent for when you cut things taking the edge off but here, as you can see, I was just going to, I'm not going to use this part for this particular ring, but I'm just going to see, you can, if you're too aggressive, you can just take the plate straight off, so. Yeah, get hot really quick. That's probably going to be good. That will probably uh, go on okay. I look for things like natural breaks, like there's two swipes across here. I'm going to cut just on, get yourself a good set of cutters. I'm going to put the cutter just on, just south of that. Bang. Okay, now on this side, I'm just going to trim up a little bit. You don't have to be excessive, but um, when you cut, you're going to leave an edge, obviously, so you don't want that sticking in somebody's finger. So we're just taking the edge off a little bit. It's not an aggressive wheel, but I've got my fingernail on it. You're just cleaning it up a little bit. Make it round. You can take, if it's going to collapse into the other part of the ring, you can actually take some of the weight out the back of it, make it a little tiny bit chamfered. It depends what you're making. But this guy, this end, normally a wheel this big, is, um, I've worn it down, but you can actually 
take the uh, burrs off of this and give it a quick little polish. You don't have to be too aggressive. Like I say, you will take the plate off. Depends how good of uh, the plating job it was, how expensive this stuff was in the first place, probably. But uh, clean it up. And then we've got. Turn that monkey off. Okay. And it's the second generation. Um, second generation uh, ring bender. So first off we're going to start off wide open jaw and we're going to put this over the mandrel and this and then and it's hard not to put, have my hands in the way but theoretically when you're making a twist ring if you come in square and straight and this is all set up dead on you're just going to turn this round it's going to hit here so depending on if it's going to be a left hand or a right hand twist of where this is going to be closer to the hand closer here or it's going to be up here would be whether it was left or right kind of twist when you turn the ring over it kind of looks funky so what we'll go for is this time we're going to go downwards and there's lots of schools of thought here you can start bending a little bit at one end but there's a point where you can't get this over this and then it becomes increasingly more difficult to actually bend it but here we go now putting it in and then see this is way lower than the tip and then just bend in and keeping that angle now this is going to twist up and coil up over here eventually not yet because we've only got wide jaws on and as we take these steps off change out the actual shape we're going to actually change the form of the ring I have to move them about now and then don't think straight and end up bending it and you can't bend it no more now if you've gone too violent with this and it's like four foot above here you can you can put it on the mandrel and change it you can, there's always a way of tweaking it afterwards Now, I'm going to leave this one on. I'm going to take that off and put that one intermediary. And I'm just going to try and tighten it up a little bit. And this is quite, quite a thick utensil. That we started with here so it'll just show you what you can do if you you can impart the right force now you're getting to the point now where if you were to trace that uh, theoretical obviously if you could trace the circumference of the shape of that it would be how big it would be about that big so we've got to change something now what we're going to do is take the mandrel out I'm going to change it down here. Put the mandrel back in. Step up. Did immediately change the diameter. See it curling in. Now you've got to be careful because you pick up this part, you can bend it out the way and stuff, so you have to raise up and down. Remember to keep your fingers out of here. This thing will bend stainless steel, so your fingers are nothing to it. So. 
and you see now now we're at the circumference of that basically maybe a little tiny bit less but the, the, the material will spring back a little bit so it's never dead on so now depending on what you're doing you could slip it on here and we'll have a look at mid ring where it is so this one's like uh, troll sized is 11 and 11 and three quarters seven eight somewhere up there so we're gonna make it a little bit more delicate so what we do is change the circumference we're gonna leave that on like I say remember it will spring back so now you got to be careful about the whole thing is on the mandrel it's not like this part over here so yeah again watch your fingers working it down each time I'm going around a little bit pulling it in pulling it into the mandrel pulling it in twisting it then I picked up a little bit of the end so I'm gonna turn it over work it down again there you go two fat troll fingers so remember what I mean about left and right where it's going to be on the hand so it looks kind of funky because it's all up so we can knock this down we can put it on the mandrel remember to keep checking when you're creeping up on the size that you want making it bigger is easy all you do is put it on here knock down It'll open up you go past where you want it to be take it off it comes back you know say it's on 11 and you knock it down to 12 it's going to spring back to you know 10 and three quarters something like that so it depends on the material but you can manipulate it plus you can actually bend with soft materials so this was up in the air flying away now it's tight tighter and all i'm using is my thumb so it's really really soft material so i just do that now every time you touch it and hit it you can actually possibly move it away from the mandrel a little bit we're going to make it smaller or larger so again you have to play with this you get kind of get used to making stuff and then working out how big things are going to be where they're going to bend now you could tighten this up even more just change after this and then change down to this size but as you can see relatively short amount of time you have a ring right it's relatively thick material yeah some people like that stuff some people don't that's not the point of this this is a point of how to actually bend a spiral ring that's about it if you got any questions you can go visit my Etsy page DCT makes um, there's some of the other stuff I make up there and uh, here's some there's a stainless steel twist pieces you cut off you don't necessarily have to have to waste there's an annealed fork well that's ring bender DCT makes ring bender 2.0 um, I'll do some more um, show you how to make a, a a fork ring and you use these tools to actually bend these into curly cues make a long ring like for your thumb like it would span this much of your thumb or more one way than the other depends where you bend it that's upcoming uh, but I've taken two videos here one on the left one on the right uh, so if something's blocked by my hand go look at the other video hey subscribe click like do that thing 
see you later guys happy new year bye